Okay, um, I'm on my way out right now to a pick. I am picking up something for free. It's thousands of items. Um, we're going to shout that out where I picked this up at or the type of locations to look for um, in the video. We're going to show you everything that I got. It's a bunch of stuff. It's thousands of items here for free. It's a standard place I pick at, but let's head on out right now. So here we are. This is what I got. This was all free. All I have into this is about 80 minutes of round trip drive time, and that's it. There's 2,000 sheet musics uh, in here, basically. They go back to the 1800s. Quite a big selection from what I saw. I haven't looked through these, but we're going to take them in, and we are going to go through them on the show probably today. So that's what I have. Hopefully that gives Gives you some thought on this we make a lot of money from universities and colleges they all have collections and they get rid of them quite often a lot of stuff is donated and they just don't want it there's annual book sales annual record sales and things along that line as well too there's six different colleges or universities that i personally deal with so anyway that's what i have hey how are we doing um literally i edited this just a few minutes before i ended up running it on the show so this just happened today. Uh, I've had this scheduled since last week. A few of you know, um, I've talked to a few of you um, via chat and online as well. I've been on the road like 25 hours of drive time this week. We've done a lot of trips. I've been to Illinois. I've been all over Michigan. I've been down to the Columbus area doing a lot of stuff. I've got some major purchases um, in the works going in the background. This was just a, a lucky flub. I buy a lot of stuff, or not necessarily buy, but we get a lot of stuff from universities and things along that line. Um, they get collections in all the time. Even local libraries get them into, and a lot of the stuff won't be useful to them. So if you look around, a lot of people don't talk about this, but book depositories, uh, library systems, school library systems, college systems, all that works you can make a ton of money. Um, just like some of the books, if you're on my Instagram, and if you don't know, I have an Instagram page. I haven't been as busy because I've been out of town a lot this week, but um, I've posted some things like some free college books I got. We've made almost $300 in just free college books that were given away at the university here where I actually graduated from. Some of these events and things like that I know about because I graduated from there and I keep track. I'm, I'm an alumni. I'm in the Alumni Association as well. So there's a lot of stuff like this that goes out. And I deal with six local campuses um, on and off. You know, sometimes there'll be sales. Sometimes there'll be, you know, uh, liquidations. A big donation came in and they don't want half of it. Things like that come up. A lot of people just um, don't realize that this is a thing. And most museums do sell off stuff from time to time. So it's a good ploy for us. We, we make a lot of money, reasonable amount of money from stuff like this. The van load you just saw was all free. I didn't pay a dime from this whatsoever. It didn't cost me a dime. Now, I've only looked through one single box of what I got. And only because it's a specific person um, that's usually worth some money. And I, I got a couple hundred dollars just in a couple sheet musics already from it, which Patreons, you'll get to see that next week. Um, but I've got a ton of boxes here. I'm surrounded by these boxes right now. We're going to pull some of the, the ones out here. I'm going to show you, and we're going to talk a little bit about sheet music today, just because 2,200 pieces of sheet music was just thrown in my lap, basically. All it cost me was about 80 minutes round trip in drive time, and I had a very nice conversation with the gentleman and got to see kind of the library system and everything. Um, where I parked, I'm parked next to the, the electrical plant, actually, that runs the entire campus was right there, so I had to come back in a back way and stuff. It was kind of interesting. I've been to that campus once before when I was working on my master's. They had a book or something, and I was actually in that building once, and it's the only place I've ever been out there is that building now twice, which is kind of a coincidence to... Um, it's a nice campus. Um, I'm going to put his information down in the bottom. He's going to send me a copy of his business card via text, and I'll have his information if anybody's interested. Very, very nice gentleman. He's retiring. Um, you know, he has a degree, the same, same works. He has the same master's degree as I have, honestly, which I was kind of surprised. So very nice gentleman, very nice. This isn't the first time I've gotten large sums. I filled my van up from universities on... Geez, maybe a dozen times in, in the last couple of years. 
it only takes one with all this stuff here a lot of people think that it's just going to be picked through on stuff like this now stuff like this is only picked through to the extent of a historical aspect of it and that's why i left part of that in there with him talking about digitizing that is the exact reason why a lot of these these colleges and campuses get rid of this stuff because it's digitized it's stuff they have to inventory and curate if they keep it so they send it off he sent off tons of this stuff one of the other campuses out here took some of it and so did another one that, that I've dealt with as well too I had a little insider information on some stuff like this so I call around I know when stuff goes up I know when the annual sales are I know when they dump off stuff this is another one of those insider secrets I would say I doubt there's many people that know much about this but again I've been doing this for years I call out the books, as I said, on Instagram. So, you know, there's way more to colleges and universities than, than books. Um, I'll go into some other topics and things on that in a future video. But there's many other things that we get from universities that help us immensely in what we do, um, monetarily wise, as well as um, some other aspects, which we'll go into, as I said. But I'm just going to pull out some stuff here. Some of these boxes of sheet music, as you heard in there, I saw some dates as far back as the 1850s in these lots. So, again, this is all free stuff. I, I, you can't ask for anything better than this. Now, some of this I'm going to do some artwork, and you're going to see something that you can do with some of this on the other channel as well, on The Art Professor. If you don't know, I have The Art Professor. It's a second channel. Um, next video on that's going to be some um, Victorian Christmas ornaments again. New different styles some with um, wool and things like that. It's going to be something totally different than the last one. Um, but with stuff like this, you know, some of it's art material. Some of it's frameable. Some of it's dead stock. I do a lot with music and stuff, so I love music. If you're looking at sheet music, and, you know, that's what we got here is sheet music, one thing to think about, if the record is rare, the sheet music's rare. I can tell you right off the bat. If it's about something that would be, you know, like a baseball team from 1910, it's a sheet music like that, it's worth some money. There's so many aspects on sheet music that are worth money. Um, if you haven't hit the like button, why don't you guys hit that like button down there? I only got a few likes and we've got 140 people on. Um, again, this just happened today. Um, Eastern Michigan University, I was at their main library. It's a very nice campus if you haven't if you don't know where it's at look it up sometime it's very nice they do a lot of good stuff they have a music program there uh, key i'm giving you a little insider another insider there they have a music department there that is something if you you want to dig into this a little bit you got to know what the universities offer if you don't know what a university offers you're you're not going to know what a university is going to have who to call and you know what to dig into but I, again i've been dealing with universities since geez, years, more than a decade. You know, I graduated not too long ago with the master's, so I've spent a lot of time at universities and realized while we were there, you know, that you could buy other people's books. You could sell, you know, buy them. I, and the, back in the day, I could sell them on Chegg's before, you know, Amazon was a huge, huge thing. Chegg's was still around too. And I'd make money off books from people and we do other things too, you know, there's a lot of stuff at universities that, that they liquidate. So um, just put that out there in your mind. I'm not going to give you every little detail, but look into it yourself if you want to know a whole nother avenue of sourcing. Because um, you see, this isn't the first time. I've gotten much bigger than this, much bigger lots than this for the exact same zero price. So I say everything I get dirt cheap, if not almost free. In many cases, I can get free quantities of stuff. The areas that I sell in, most people think is junk. So I can get mass quantities of even records for free, um, especially 78s. Sheet music, I can get free quite often. Even at church sales, at the end of the day, if they don't sell big bins of it, I sometimes can get a couple hundred pounds of sheet music for nothing. Now I picked up I don't know, four or 500 pounds, I guess. It's a lot of sheet music here. You saw how many boxes there were. We eliminated it down to a few boxes less, but it was still, I think there's, I don't know. I don't have them all sitting right here, but there was a lot of boxes. Let me pull out a few of them here, and let's just talk a little bit about sheet music, um, for instance, here. Now, something that, in fact, here's a good box here. Um, something that people aren't familiar with. This is what's called large format. It's 11 by 14, 
and I think the small ones, um, 9 by 12, I think, are the two sizes. So you can see them compared to each other. Sheet music, too. Um, certain performers are worth some money. Other things to consider on sheet music, and let me see if I can find some here to give you an example of what I was going to point out. Probably not with my luck. In fact, yeah, maybe I can. No, I don't want to reach over and grab those. Um, let me just, I'll, we'll try to find some here, but interesting topics are good on sheet music. Now, this is one I have to look up. I can tell you right now, this has a good topic on it, Caprice Gnomes. Ladybug. I mean, this is a nice graphic one, and pretty much what I see is they're all about this condition. He told me they trashed thousands of them, like 30 or 40 boxes. All together, those boxes that you saw, when they got the collection, there was 114 of those boxes is what they collected from this individual. So I'm getting the tail end of this. When a university or a college is searching through them, as I said, they're not looking for rares. They're not looking for what costs money. So if it's picked through from a college or a university, I don't care because they're not worried about the money. Um, some of the material went to a one that's teaching American cultural studies, which is a, a PhD that I'm seriously been thinking about. I actually retyped up my, my thesis for my master's to submit it to Bowling Green for a submittance into the program. I've got letters from you know, the dean and all that stuff from when I graduated. So I've been really thinking about that. But a university like that's only going to want stuff that would be in pop culture in the, the, the mainstream media. That's what they're going to want. That's why I brought up the question on swing, because it's only going to be stuff like that. So I know some of the, the type of, so they're not going to be picking the rare ones or the, the ones something like this one here. Now, this is even an oddball one. Most of the time, they'll say two-step, one-step or two-step. Now, three-step is a really fast-paced devilish almost so it kind of fits the whole team something like this here and again i'm just throwing out some prices i have not seen this one myself but i i would not be surprised if this one's not worth 75 bucks or better it's very very highly possible especially with halloween right now and talking about the halloween is this the whole thing what do i got here yeah it looks like the whole thing dance of the demon uh let's see here De Mon in Tans, Grand Gallop de Concert. Now, I don't know who this is. I'll have to look this one up, too. But this one's pretty wild in my book. It's got Devils and Demons. Nice Halloween one up here. Gloom Dispeller March. Now, some of these are borderline on ragtime. I'm sure most people might not know the difference between rag, a two-step, and a foxtrot. But the point is ragtime is early jazz. Uh, Scott Joplin is like a key name you should look up if you don't know that. I took jazz history because of it helps me with stuff like this. So I talk about, you know, education and knowing stuff. I have a degree and part of that degree I was able to take stuff that helped me identify who's who in this kind of stuff. So a normal person may not know the performers or who the writers are or who Sam Fox is or any of this kind of stuff. But I know those names because I spent four months and we had to do a big project at the end covering something. And, I, you know, it's all in jazz. So jazz is where the money's at. So you could deduct the cost of a jazz history class, you know, as a business expense. I'm just telling you, that's a legitimate 100 percent business expense would be taking a jazz history class. Maybe it's not something you like to do. And maybe I'm just rambling on that. But. It helps me immensely to go through stuff like this, where other people would walk by something that's plain like this. And I've talked about this here and there. I wouldn't because I know this is right on the cusp of, of being ragtime. This is early um, date wise. It's 1911. So it's pre-World War One. It's it's a nice example, large format. So um, we'll just pull out a few more here and we'll talk for a few minutes on what's going on with eBay because I know there's a big mess going on now, um, and I'm going to touch on that in just a minute here. Captain Betty, I mean, this is perfect. One step and a two step. There's two versions of the same sheet music. Just a good example. Now, I just had to mix it all together, so there's all kinds of stuff. Chinese Tea Party. Like China stuff, I talk about being collectible as well. This is a collectible piece because it is China. Just like you would find collectibles in other fields like photographs or postcards, Chinese collectibles have the same uh, draw on them as well, too. Before I go on, um, let me just give a call out 
and thank Mr. Buys a lot for the $5 super chat. I am sorry I was doing the video, so I didn't want to miss that, but I do appreciate the super chats when you do that. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget, and I almost forgot with the paper, so I just want to call that out, and thank you very kindly. Um, again, here's these are all good ones here. Every one I've pulled out so far is a collectible, and this is worth looking up. This one's most definitely Bugs, Insects Are Always Good. From the Diary of a Fly, Bella Bartok. Now, I've heard of Bella Bartok, pianist, I would imagine. Here's a real good one here. Again, these are these are the leftovers. These are the scraps that the other universities didn't want. What I, I said before is true. They don't look at the value on these from a college or university. If they need a, a piece plugged in and they only have like um, certain types of music they collect, all the rest of it's going bye-bye. It's going to go up for sale. It's going to be donated. It's going to be given to another university. At the end of the day, when they can't get rid of the rest of it, this is what happens with it. I walk home with thousands of pieces of stuff for free. Little Nemo. Now, this is a very good one here. Big cartoon series, um, characteristic two-step. Usually two-steps are like a foxtrot. Let's, I'm just looking at the date. 1906, really nice one here. Something like this you might see on eBay for 30 or 40 bucks real easily. So again, I don't worry. It was worth the drive. I had no idea classically. Yeah, I figured that was the case, Annie. Um, I, I'm almost sure that it's a pianist is what I thought. Um, a lot of these are um, large format. There's over half of these are large format. Large format is where the money is for the most part. The, the large size of these. Those are where you want. That's exactly the ones that, that come out. Now here's one that even says a rag song. If it says rag on it, that's a ragtime classic. Anything that says rag. Here's another rag as well. So all of these are ones you want to look up. Anything that says that like this. Now I'm not telling you go out and spend a ton of money on this stuff. I don't have anything into this. I would have no way bought all of these for anything if I had to spend the money on each one individually. I, I would have passed on most of these, and I wouldn't even have taken the trip out there. But they're free. So at free, I can afford to just take them all and spend a little extra time looking them up because I don't know every one. I know rags. I know when they're interesting or like this one. This one looks like... Yeah, it is, too. There's another format of sheet music, which I don't run across much because they're usually trashed out. But this is from the music section of the Chicago Sunday Examiner. It's a Sunday newspaper from 1908, and this was an insert into there. And these sometimes are very scarce. I showed one of uh, Orphan Annie. In fact, I think there might be another one in here, Little Orphan Annie. And um, those kind of things are very scarce. So any of the newspaper ones were trashed. They just weren't around very long. So... You're going to miss out on stuff like that, you know, without buying these big lots, I guess I could say. Cavalier Rustican Rag, another rag time. So he had them separated. I happened to put the box that I guesstimated would be earlier stuff, and that's literally what this looks like here. Um, now, here's a real good one, too. And you'll know who this is. Enrico Caruso. You should know who that is. They've this. is. It's been taken off on Family Guy, American Dad... Jeez, most of the cartoon series and stuff that does comedy has taken off on this person. Now, this is something This is something that he actually composed, Dreams of a Long Ago. Classical of some sort, this is opera, basically, um, like this can still sell. A lot of people will pass up classical sheet music and stuff. Most of it's junk, in all honesty, but there are some really good ones if you know which ones to look for. I'm going to touch on that a little bit in Patreon, but not much. I'm just going to show you one topic next week out of what I found in here, so you'll get a little insight around that one. This one I'm going to have to look up, too. Teddy Bears and Bears, and this is anthropomorphic, too, so this one might be a real good one, the Big Brown Bear. I've seen, and I've bought... 20, 30, maybe 40,000 sheet musics in my day. Maybe more than that. I don't know. I'm, It's at least 30 or 40,000 in my day. There's a bunch of these I've never seen before. So Lord knows where, where they got these from originally, the original person who donated them. Um, but they really have a, a decent collection. I don't worry if they're separated. I'll still sell them. It, it means nothing to me. I don't worry if they're tattered or ripped on there at all. These old ones, it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, they'll go for much more money or a lot more money if they're in better condition, but I'll still sell these. The cover alone, as long as it's complete, it has the front, the back, and they're all numbered so you can tell. Well, I probably, yeah, okay, I did pick one. Okay, so now the first inside page you see says three. 
you got to know how they number these. This is one. This blank one is two. Then you have three. Then this is four, five, and then six. So if you look like in a catalog for sheet music and it tells you six, you might be confused on what six means. They're not all marked that way. One might be the inside. It, it just depends. But the majority of them, one is the very first. The cover is one. So this is a six-page sheet music. It's all here. Really nice one, too, honestly. Now, these ones, I've had many like this before. Now, they look like they're the same one, but they're actually different versions of it. This is another size format. There's quite a few different sizes that aren't standard. This is a war era. Paper was expensive. It was used during the war effort for, you know, correspondence and things like that. So, and they didn't use the factories as much for paper, so they had to conserve paper. So, you always know you got a World War uh, one one when they're smaller like this and I'll show you the difference just so you can see it So I mean you can see the difference and let me just show you one of the big ones again, too, so you can see See the difference here, so you can kind of see how the difference is in size That's the basics of them um, war issues. I look for it depends now. This one's very common again These just happen to be in here. I'm not sorting through these you are looking at this box just as I am in fact, there's some copies of the same ones in here, which is fine because something like Jazz Baby I could get 14, 15 bucks for, and I got two of them. So you know, that's there's at least probably a thousand or better dollar wise if I just sat here and sold these, just by what I'm seeing right here. If they're all like this, counting the ones that I already know I pulled out by a specific artist. There's at least a thousand bucks just free here. Now, again, I'm going to do some art projects with this, and you'll get to see what you can do with stuff like this as well. I'm picked out, or will pick out. I know there's some angels and some stuff like that in here, which I will pull out. Now, here's a real good one too. Jazz. Anything that says jazz is really worth looking at. So, just something um, in my repertoire of things I would look for. Let's see if we got any questions. I don't want to ignore everybody. We'll try and bop back and forth. In fact, since I'm going to look at look at who's here tonight, I'll probably skip calling everybody out today. I do apologize if that's the case, only because we're 15 minutes back because of the, the video in the front. If you're just catching us now, I was on a haul today. I've got some footage in the beginning. You're, you can see me picking up this stuff just hours before this, just a few hours ago. I literally got back and just had enough time to process some video and pull it up for this. So in the beginning of the video here, if you don't know, there is some footage as well. Uh, let me see here. So again, I'm going to try to pop down to where we're at now. I do apologize. I'm not trying to skip anybody. Um, let me pop down a little bit here. So again, I'm not trying to snub anybody here. I'm just going to try and get some questions. I've already, we shot off um, some time here on this. Uh, let's see here. Let me scoop on down here. Yeah, my feed bounces all over, so I do appreciate everybody being on. Um, let, let's, let's hit this one here. eBay's issues. A couple weeks ago, I started getting messages from folks that um, sizes and stuff were disappearing from clothing. So I know that that's what everybody's talking about. Not only that, if you're unaware, I have friends who do car parts, and I do sell some car parts as well, too. You know, mirrors, hood ornaments, um, brand new NOS stock of some things and stuff like that, too. Um, it's happening in that department, too. And I'm sure it's all tied back to the same type of issues that they had with the photos disappearing last June, where they lost, what was it, like 30 million uh, uh, sellers' photos from a couple hundred million uh, auction listings. I know I lost hundreds of them. I still haven't fixed them all, honestly. It just wasn't worth the time or hassle. Same similar issue, you know, just like um, we, we brought up the issue with um, the ad blocker and all that. Now, if you notice, the promoted listings are back as well as the organic at the same time. I'm still not running any promoted listings, of course, but the, the point of it is that they brought them back now. Everybody's telling me, and I've, I've looked into it, you can see the promoted and the original. So you got double again. So, But they didn't announce that, you know. That's the type of thing that drives me nuts that, you know, hopefully one day they'll learn before it's too late that you got to tell people what's going on. So, you know, I know that they've lost everybody's size on your clothing. I mean, that's a given. I mean, I, I there's no way to get it back knowing how a database works. Once the link is broken, 
your the new listing has a new link to it so you can't bring back any size designations if they were held up in a separate spot than the main frame the the structure of your your page so it's going to be the same thing with the photos my my grief with them is in most normal companies i've ever seen and i've done it work database i have a degree in database design and construction development the whole works i i took that in college which is what eBay is, you run out a test for like 90 days. I, I just, and you run it in a closed system. So you can see what happens over time. And when an update goes in, you can see what happens before you roll it out. I don't know what they are doing. I don't know how they, their structure is set up. I know they're working on somewhat archaic uh, mainframe structure. It's not really a mainframe, but um, terminology wise, it's the, 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 the structure of their, their uh, database. It's, it's been there for a long time. You know, I don't know if they've tried to piece it together and they're keep running it or what the case may be. But, you know, when a system's old and you try to, you know, squeeze in new stuff, it doesn't always work the way it should. So that's why everywhere I've seen they, they run these tests and the tests go on and on. I mean, 90 days minimum. If you find an issue, then you run more tests. Now, I would have never, ever, ever run a test or run out a, a, a something like this big right before fourth quarter, you know, right well in fourth quarter, I should say, right before Christmas. It, it's it's going to kill people's sales. It's going to make people hate eBay even farther. I mean, and I, again, I don't hate eBay. I, I do love the platform, and I'm not telling anybody to avoid doing eBay, but, you know, I don't like clothing, and I'm glad I dumped clothing, but, you know, I feel bad for those who have it, because I did see when, when the video was playing earlier, there's people with 500 um, you know, 500 listings that are all gone. And I was told you can't bulk edit them. Now, I've heard that bulk editing issue from several people in my Patreon group as well, that you can't bulk edit a lot of stuff now. And I understand I, I it shouldn't work that way, but I know why it's it's doing it. Again, it's tied back to the, the, the mainframe and the servers, you know, because part of your stuff is stored in one spot, part of it's stored in the other. So if you're trying to Added a whole bunch of things, and, and since they've got the the you know the catalog system going on with eBay with the news and stuff like that, it can't pull from multiple different servers at the same time anymore. Is my assumption on it because it's tying up too much of it. It's not set up to do that. I think they they didn't think about all that stuff when they rolled this out. You know maybe they didn't even you know totally cross their mind all the aspects that are affected when you change one little. It's a domino effect. You do one little change and the whole thing could go in kablooey and, and change as well. So I would say you're going to find more glitches. I, I, I would almost assure you when it's not the good time for this stuff to happen. We all know the CEO just stepped down. I don't want to turn this into an attack eBay thing because I'm I'm making a lot of money from eBay right now. So I, I can't complain. Um but there is stuff like this that's aggravating. I've got a video coming out that's going to go into some very good depth on eBay's new policies and, and how they don't know how they are. Uh, the video's being shot or it's almost done. But I've spent a month researching this, so you can't say that I didn't research it. I've got uh, two other people that helped me with this next one. This is an internal thing that eBay has just done. And, and when I the video hits, you'll see what I'm talking about. And it covers all kinds of stuff. It's a huge undertaking they did. They they rewrote all the, the rules, the policies, mostly for the worst in my book. Um, and I'll explain all that too, but it's not going to be attack on eBay. So I don't want anybody attacking me for something like that. But the point of it is that, that it makes no no freaking sense. You know, I'm not going to cuss on it, but it, it, it's just... That's not making any sense. And the issue with the new changes could save me hundreds of dollars a year if it's changed the way it looks. But we're going to go into that in another video here. Again, I got all my facts straight on this next one. I spent 30 days and we made a dozen calls to eBay on one specific thing with everybody asking the same thing, different times of the day. I spent some time on this one here. So you're going to see how confused it is at, at eBay with their own policies next week. Because for me, it's an issue of money. I could save thousands by the end of the year if the policy goes one way. But I'll explain it in the video. I don't want to go rambling on. This has been my biggest aggravation for this past month is the, the new policy. So, uh, yeah, I hear that. I see Carl here. Everybody's talking about the new payment system. I haven't had any issues with the payment system. The payment system, who's handling it, handles Etsy. So if you're sold on Etsy, you already know how it works. You know, just in all honesty, it's the same thing. It's the same company, same everything. And I haven't on, on one. I haven't had any issues Again, I don't I don't worry when the payments come through. So for somebody else or if this was 
eight years ago for me, I'd, I wouldn't want it either because I needed my money right away when I first started. So I completely understand everybody's worry on that. It, it works fine because it's tested in, in a trusted system. Obviously, there has been some kinks here and there with certain avenues of it when they're integrating new stuff like Apple Pay or something like that. The, the framework, the structure, how the payment system is handled, works, and integrates with eBay is the same as it is for other sites that the same aiding company works and does with. So I personally have seen it work in many occasions as well as our Etsy and on other people's stores. I don't just always look at mine. I do look at other people's stores. I do have friends that do eBay, and I do look and see how things work in other other places. That's why I said the last 30 days, well, over a little over 30 days, we've made many calls, and I've gotten responses. I've got literally um, word-for-word transcripts of conversations that we had with them so we can compare to make sure that everybody's on the same page with what I'll talk about. But this is the frustration. At least they put something out about it. Again, it's the, the lost sizes on clothing has been going on for a while. So they're just now telling people. So it's already a couple weeks behind the ball from what I've seen and been told. Same with the auto parts. So if you didn't see auto parts listed on there, there's the same issue with auto parts for years and models that they fit on. These are all um, like individual identifiers for a specific category item like um you know the the actual item so if they get lost from another another server that they're stored on or another database it can't be pulled back just like the photo issues i would say this is literally the same thing as when they lost the photos i i, I it, it makes complete sense they did the same similar style mistake a second time is what i would take it as you know why how or not i don't know but i don't know any work around about it you know, our dogs are running around down here. Now he's laying down on the ground. Um, again, that's literally what's going on. So if you don't know that that's happened to most of the people with clothing, again, I don't sell clothing, so I'm not going to really worry too much about the clothing issue. But let's see what we got here. Let's see if my feed drops off on me again. If you haven't hit the like button, we're like 187, it looks like, in, in viewers. Hit that like button for us here. It does help out the channel. Promoted listings equals no. Yeah, I haven't touched them since I found out what they were going on with that. Haven't touched them at all. Hang on, let me let me pop up and let's get to some questions if we have. I know it's a lot of eBay stuff. Uh, just weird that everything else transferred over fine. Hustle and Grand Calgary, welcome, welcome. Again, certain items are stored on different servers or different databases, I should say. So if they're pulling from one database certain information... Um, and it, the link is broken, it's not going to be able to pull. That's what happened with the photos. So like your your main aspect of your listing, the, the framework that holds everything together is like a static page. It can't be moved. And one image is tied to that page. Every other piece of information is tied to the database that stores it. So all that little pieces of information, your, your shipping policies, your payment policies, your return policies, all the business policies, all your addresses or anything else tied to that listing comes from a different source so if one link is broken to one source it can't get that information whether it's photos are lost whether it's sizes are lost whether your policies all disappear off your listings that's all things that could happen when a link is broken i mean we went into this in, in college even once that link is broken and your listing has renewed and been issued a new number i should say or a location field number uh, again i'm trying to be simple i'm not trying to give you a bunch of technical data but once it's done that it's a whole new listing technically yeah some of the tracking and your followers will still follow along because it's just kind of bumped over but technically internally wise there's a different number for it basically or a different position for it and once that has a new position it can't get photos it can't get you know sizes or whatever it's lost whatever didn't carry over that information it's gone and I, I'd, I'd be shocked as can be if eBay can find it for you. You know, I, I would be totally shocked, especially knowing how it worked with the photos. And I, I talked to people at eBay over the photo issue, so I'm very confident that I'm, I'm understanding what happened correctly with my understanding of how a database works. So, anyway. Rich Sanders, eBay is sending me messages telling me that the electronic games I have up must have an age level added to my listing. Again, more changes that I didn't see personally announced. This goes back to 
the the catalog or catalog category system setup that they're trying to match with Amazon. It's probably a new feature they added in, and now they're requiring it to be done. That would be my guess. Amazon, it's already there because it's built into the whole thing, so you don't have to worry about it. I would say you're going to have to do that. Uh, let me pop back up and see if we can get to some things here. Opera Dude, yeah, Fanny. Oh, I have a lot of those newspaper inserts. Sheet music pieces, they're mostly really brittle. Yeah, that's why when they're in good condition, those the ones from the newspaper, they go for decent money. This one here is in really nice condition. In fact, there might be some more. I didn't even... Yeah, there's other jazz in here, too. Jazz Baby. Again, size-wise, you can tell World War One, World War I. Um, let's see if there's any more of those in here. Probably not. Yeah, here's another World War One era. War Department age. Oh, here's a real good one. Now, I just talked about this on a video, so some of you are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. This is Fess Parker in Westward Ho, the wagons. Ringle Wrangle, Fess Parker. This one could be worth 75 bucks right off the bat here. Yeah, Fess Parker, Walt Disney, Walt Disney Company. Well, that's a nice one here. Nothing close to it. Broadway Blues, here's another good one. We'll pop back on, we'll answer some questions this second here. I get into sheet music. I love the artwork on them. Here's another nice one. Broadway Blues. This one might be worth some good money here. And China. There's another China one. That one might be worth some good money too. Chinese Lullaby. I have to look. Again, I'm going to have to look up some of these. I look them all up online. Most of the time I can find them by, by eBay. If it's a musical song, I can judge it by a record price as well too. Just FYI. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I don't have a script or anything, Rick Duke. Nothing like that. Yeah, I have no bullet points and nothing else. Yeah, my head, my mind is always running through with stuff like this. I know that sounds a little weird. I, I've got ADD and, and, and stuff like that, too. Uh, attention Deficit Disorder. Um, and I'm, I'm very OCD. So things run through my head, and it just it's hard to get them out sometimes. So just FYI. Sometimes I just sit and lay in bed. You know, with a million thoughts, and I have to write stuff down just to get it out so I, I can go to sleep sometimes, just FYI. That's just me. I don't need bullet points. I used to talk in, uh, as a regional and general manager for many years, and I just I knew what I wanted to talk about, and I had my numbers. Somewhat modern, classically, yeah. And where are we at? No, not a photographic memory at all. Just the, the stuff I saw. I've seen this stuff. I've seen this kind of stuff for 20 years. Um, sheet music very heavy for at least 10. So after a while, you see the same stuff over and over again. Yeah, if you're just first starting off in sheet music, you're going to see it's overwhelming. There's just so many different things. But after a while, you'll see the same names, the same writers of a song. Um, that's a big one here. Knowing the writers, knowing who wrote stuff. And knowing different names they would have used and stuff like that is really, really helpful in my personal opinion. Uh, again, I'm trying to get to some questions. I'm not trying to snub anybody. I know I almost always call everybody out here, but due to time, I can't be on super, super long. Tomorrow I've got a lot of stuff going on. After this week here, though, my time's back to me. I'm not going to be out of town until one more deal comes in. We're probably going to be buying a... Um, a massive lifetime collection of records from somebody in Illinois, and I'll have to rent a vehicle and um, bring an employee or one of the family members along, maybe two, I don't know, to help load this, because it's massive. We're gonna we're looking at a 29-foot rental um, truck filled from top to bottom, front to back, with just records. So um, we're still trying to hammer out a price. If the price isn't right, I'm not taking it. But And then I got another deal going on behind the scenes in um, a military uh, maker's uh, warehouse. I'm trying to purchase from somebody who purchased it directly from the military maker when they went out of business. So um, and it's, these are both big purchases, you know, massive money investment purchases. So not a small time thing. Uh, let me see here. Let me pop down here and get to some questions.
How do you find one when it sells when you have so many? Everything is binned up here. Sheet music's in bins. Um, it depends on what what uh, what you're looking for. If you're talking about inventory, everything is marked. And all my shelves are marked too. There's numbers on them. This is A, and it goes all the way up to, I think now I've got um, an N shelf, I think is the highest number I've got. So there's one of these all the way up to N. And then I've got a bunch behind me. If If it has merchandise that's up, it has a number and a letter system on all my inventory. If it doesn't have a numbered uh, shelf, it's not listed. So it's real easy to tell anybody walking in here what's listed and what's not instantly. Uh, again, all of these shelves behind me, this is C here. Which, where where am I? Is that C? Yeah. A, a B's over here. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a couple shelves that are out of order, unfortunately. But it doesn't really matter. Each slot has its own number. So... You know, when I've I've got internal numbering, I've got internal uh, lists. Everything is alphabetized once it's stored, like sheet music. It'll all be alphabetized by size and then location. So I have several locations that have sheet music. So each one isn't some overwhelming stack to look through. It's broken down, just like photos. Everything's got paper designating like number systems for filing everything, but. Everything is numbered, so even if I'm not here, I can just say it's in shelf such and such. My on my phone, I've got a photo of every shelf that's numbered and labeled. So, I if I if I can't remember, all I got to just look at the photos on my phone if I'm not home, and I can tell them, hey, it's here. Go pull something out. You know, most of the stuff that I have up up listed, I price so I know where it's at. You know, the wife prices some too, but most of the stuff in this area I price, so I can pretty much tell you where I put it. Almost anything. Um, Stuff like that, maybe I can remember if I've seen it, but I'm really good on, on stuff like that. You've already let it, edited 400 listings. Wow, yeah, that's pretty bad. Sales-wise, um, I'm not having really any issues with sales, truthfully. I know that, that, I'm sure, in fact, I can't prove it, but I'm sure eBay has some major issues with the database, in my opinion, with their the system, and that is affecting people's sales. Maybe because things aren't showing up. If you're in clothing and this happened to everybody who does clothing, you're talking maybe half the site could be affected by people not being able to search for a specific shirt by size, which is a huge factor. If somebody's looking for Tommy Bahama, an extra large, you can't do that. I mean, yeah, maybe if it's in the size or in the title, but a lot of people don't list it, especially if they have multiples. If you're doing wholesale and you've got the same shirt in six different sizes, you, you can't, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't list all those in the title, or most people don't. Yeah, yeah, Dom, Prime Time Treasure Hunter. Um, Before I forget, and I should have said it earlier too, tomorrow night Dom's going to be on, and we're just going to be talking about best sourcing locations. So if you want to know stuff like I'm just talking about today, like where I got all this type of sheet music at, me and Dom are going to hammer down some some places where we routinely get multiples in, in quantity. Dom and I talk a lot, and we, we source similarly. So Dom can buy a van full as well for one small lump sum and just sell a couple things and get your money back. You know, for me now, today's pickup, I have nothing into it other than maybe 10 bucks in gas, if even that much. So I'm not worried in my time. I rocked out. I just turned up the radio. I've got XM which I bought from Savers like four years ago with must have a lifetime subscription on it for two ninety nine, mind you. I just crank it up and, you know, I'm on the highway, so no big deal. I it was a slow highway, not much traffic. Highway twenty three for those of you who live in this general area, but I was up in Ann Arbor area. Um I source all the way up to uh Saginaw area, if anybody knows where that's at. So um we do go Michigan, Illinois, Indiana um, all through Ohio as well, too, for sourcing trips. So sometimes you may not know it. Videos are recorded ahead of time. But as I said, I am out of town sometimes for, you know, the whole week sometimes. And I got like 24, 25 hours of drive time in this past week. It's done, thank goodness. I don't like driving that much, but, you know. Yeah, Josie, you're talking about the logarithms in quarter four. I don't know what they got going on. This is just a terrible time. No real business... I would say, would ever want to roll this out. You would roll this out and test all of this stuff that they're doing now um, ahead of time. You'd have done this, you know, at the slowest time midsummer in June is when you would want to do it, which is when the photos disappeared, when they were probably rolling out something else. So why would you do it 
in fourth quarter? Why would anybody in their right mind do it in fourth quarter? Amazon gets prepared for fourth quarter, and they do all this stuff ahead of time. They give you deadlines to get stuff sent in, cutoff times, and everything. It's it's Everything's explained when you're on sites like that. So it's frustrating when it happens with eBay, and they just don't do it like that. It, I don't understand them at all. It makes no... No freaking sense, pardon me, but that's it's annoying to some extent with that. For me, I don't worry too much about that because we're we've been set up for years now. So when we send something in, FBA or whatever we're doing, you know, I know when I want to get it in. I know you know what my deadline is. I don't care what Amazon's is. I've got my own deadlines. Just like if you're going to set yourself up for for fourth quarter, we set ourselves up for this fourth quarter last year. You know, in November-ish, in October, November, I think was when we first started. And this year, we're already looking into fourth quarter for next year already. I've already talked to people, and we've already got appointments set up. So, you know, we're running to November, you know. It sounds ridiculous for some people to be looking for this this far in advance, but if you're going to do wholesale and want to get some contracts going, you got to be doing them now, you know, for next year, you know. If you're just trying to live month to month, you know, you got to look ahead at some point, you know, maybe you can't do it yet, but that's your goal. Your goal is to be able to buy and have fourth quarter set up before, you know, it's a year in advance. Like when a toy company goes and buys, they'll have a toy fair or toy show and they'll buy sometimes 16 months, 18 months in advance. So that's why like um, Tickle Me Elmo or one of those dolls ran out because it was ordered, you know, like a year and a half in advance. Nobody knew what was going to be hot. To some extent, you know, you can judge on some things, like if a movie's coming out or something, but the Talking Elmo and Tickle Me Elmo were just some fad, you know, and, and it, who knew what was going to happen? So it's stuff like that that's it's bought ahead of time, and there's certain things that we can buy. Again, I've talked about I have three specific items we sell constantly, every year, constantly, day in and day out, and I've done them for, we're going on our fourth year now, the same three items. No competition, so... It's stuff like that that I sign up and I get deals with way ahead of time. Um, you know, you got to have a niche for something to work like that. So, you know, that's just my take on that. <clears throat> Let me see here. Yeah, I've been talking to people all day long today. Was so irate I went and bought a pumpkin pie and three cans of whipped cream. You have 1,200 listings, I'm assuming, that are missing. Let's move on and let's see if we got some questions. Yeah, um, you know, e with eBay, and I, I, I know it's being diluted more and more. And I know people are saying, getting frustrated with sales and stuff. There's a lot more people selling online. And eBay was founded and made on selling collectibles, rare stuff, stuff like sheet music and stuff like that. That's where eBay was started at, and that's what eBay does the best at. They don't do the best at selling new or used clothing. They don't do the best at selling new video games and stuff like that. It's just not, not what they've always done the best at. The, the collectibles do because the people that sell on the platform... You know, they drive it. That's what they do. So, you know, in the fields that I, I go in, I don't have the, the issues that most everybody else has because collectibles sell all year round. Dom, uh, primetime treasure hunter, he does comic books a lot. He collects comic books, you know, so those sell all year round for him as well, too. This isn't something that, that you know, you have to worry about it slowing off. You don't have to change your inventory. Collectibles are collectibles. That's why antique businesses have been around for all these generations, because people have collected something all the time, you know? So like this sheet music here, there's two or three different types of collectors that would buy something like this. Let's, let's use this one for an example. Disney collector would buy this. A movie collector or Western collector could buy this. A sheet music person would buy this. Someone who loves Fess Parker. And if you don't know who Fess Parker is, you got to look up Fess Parker. There, I mean, there's four different categories minimum that this could be listed in. That's the type of thing you want the best. Pictures and things, images. Like, this would make an awesome Christmas ornament, in all honesty, right there, that image. Uh, in fact, it's all here, too. This is just an example of the type of stuff and what you can do. If one thing doesn't work for you, you know, and, and you're in a flooded category, try selling something else. That's what I can tell you. Branch out and look for different avenues. 
around here, I can't get clothing. And I know there's quite a few people still talking about clothing on here. There's nothing wrong with selling anything. Who cares what you sell? But for us, I hate clothing. I hate all the, the, the stuff that goes with it, the returns. I hate having to do the measurements. It takes more photos. I, I was the one who would turn stuff inside out to and photograph it turned inside out. It, it's a lot of work. And I just, it's not worth it. The stuff that I sell, I can, you know, flood eBay with a bunch of stuff. And it's, it's so dirt cheap. I, it's in cases like this, I don't pay anything for it. And, you know, it's basically all profit. So I don't worry if I've got 20,000 listings up or 70,000 listings up on eBay on, on several different um, stores. It doesn't matter because the fees are, are so small compared to how much I'm selling. It, everybody says you worry about the fees, too much fees with all the stuff you have up. I don't care if I spend, you know, $3,000 a month in eBay fees because I'm making so much more than that. It's a drop in the bucket. It's it's like, you know, complaining about filling up your tank fifty dollars worth of gas a week, but you're making, you know, four thousand dollars a week from that gas. It, it's it's nothing. It's a drop in the bucket for me. You know, we're on different platforms, so I sell across the place. So, you know, it, it it's not as big of an ordeal for once you've got so much stuff up. Once you got so much stuff up it always sells, so I don't have any of those issues either. So I know we're rambling. Let's get back to some questions. Do you use variety listings where there is a drop down menu on eBay and when do you use them that's a variation and that's not allowed unless the items are technically identical and that's part of the the policy video I'm going to be putting out next week the drop down menus is not was never intended for doing random items like everybody's doing now and I got 12 phone calls in eBay by three different people and all of the answers were different on what is or isn't allowed and we all asked on two different listings we all gave them the same exact two listings and got 12 different responses from 12 different phone calls on what is or isn't allowed from each one of those phone calls nothing was really exactly the same so I wouldn't do any of that drop down menu with doing stuff like that the the variations is what you're talking about because technically you can get kicked off eBay for using those wrong and I personally know people or have talked to people who have sent me stuff confirming that they were kicked off for doing just that I have a video talking about it so that's why the policies have been they're all vague now they they rewrote all the policies for everything you do on eBay and got rid of all the explanations to, as to how they work and muddled it all up so there's no even when I we called eBay on that specific issue the the person we talked to had been with eBay for years in many of the cases had to read the new policy just to understand and then they messed it up and got it wrong and then had to call the department that handles variation listings which you or I can never talk to and then we all get secondhand information, and I get 12 different answers from 12 different phone calls from three different people calling, and eBay hasn't a clue on their own policy. You know, no one knows what the eBay policy is on variations anymore. That's the video you're going to get. I'll give you that right now. And it, I don't record their voices because you're not allowed to do that. So anybody recording eBay talking is violating a law, so I don't do that. Um, and I'm not going to sit there and type it and put all that in there. You can take my word for when the video comes out or not, but two other people helped me with this, and, and they'll back up what I said. Again, we we each of us had four calls in the eBay, so we can do it from different areas of the country. They won't be tied to the same number. We'll be calling different times of the day. So I investigated all this stuff. Don't do variations until you're sure what is or isn't allowed. Tired of your sales, uh, you're talking, of Carl's talking about the sales graph. Yeah, I never even look at that stuff. I don't worry about any of that. I just go by my daily sales from my um, sold list on there, and then that's what I look at, because I punch those numbers in at the end of the day on a spreadsheet. Uh, let's see here. Let's pop down here. In fact, let me check the time. My feed just disappeared. Yeah, we're going to go for a few more minutes. I'm going to have to stop it by about 8.30, since I still have something else to do. Hang on, let's see here. What happens to your business during recessions like 2000? I never had any recession. <clears throat> We've been on eBay for a very long time. I didn't go full time till nine years ago, though. I picked up an ink cartridge today for two ninety eight for resale. <clears throat> Watch out with ink cartridges that are used, Robert Edwards. Sometimes if they're old and, and out of date, they won't work in a printer, and you'll you'll ruin someone's printer. I'm telling you straight out i had we bought one like that before 
and uh, it came in. And it was bad, and I had to heck clean up my 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 printer. And um, I could have billed and, and made the person pay for that too, but we looked into that too. And, and it's never recommended to get old, outdated um, cartridges. They could jam up the system and ruin a printer. Just personal opinion. <clears throat> if you're talking about sheet music, they were from the 50s but had Confederate. Yeah, you can't have any Confederate flags on it. The only thing you can have that on is a coin or a stamp. And same thing with like Hitler or anything like that. You can have swastikas on postcards if they're not related to Germany. And you can sell money, coins, and stamps with swastikas on them, as well as Hitler's image. You know, just FYI. I'm not condoning anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. My dog's sitting here and the hair is bugging me. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at? I've been on eBay for 19 years. It's a dumpster fire the last year or so. Corgi Hill Attic. Depends on what you sell. It's hard to say. I mean, I don't have those issues, but we've centered in on, on you know, very specific um, categories. I mean, we really fine-tuned our category search areas that we look for stuff in. And it, it's come out for the better, at least for us, because I don't pay much for anything, and including nothing for a lot of the stuff. So, you know... Um, it just depends on what you sell, I guess. Uh, we've changed up through the years. You know, we used to do totally different business. I've done clothing for a while. We did book scanning for a while. I changed up when something when the markets changed. I've changed with them. Um, I gave up certain items. I don't even look for certain antiques anymore at all, even though I can make money at them. Just because it's, I can make so much more money off this kind of stuff, paper, and my shipping costs are low. I charge for shipping on top of it, so everything's reasonable with the with the paper items. It's just so much easier. It takes seconds. It's two photos. I, I limit some of my items to you know stuff that's two or three photos max, and that takes so much little time to ship. A, a sheet music's you know seconds I can wrap up one of these because we got it down to a science here, you know. So anyway, I know it's not like that for everybody, so. Keep in plastic bins to avoid. So yeah, we everything's bagged and binned. <clears throat> Welcome, Kathy. Kathy Reese from Australia. I got it. I know there was one with the kangaroo on it from Australia. Somewhere in here there is one. Uh, let's pop down here again. We'll give it a little few more minutes here. Mr. Rojogo Bin. Yep, give me the itch again after not buying, selling, or restoring anything for almost 10 years. I found myself at an estate sale Saturday morning and bought a mahogany high boy cedar box for 20 bucks. Well, for 20 bucks, mahogany. A high boy is a pretty nice, pretty big piece of, uh, of uh, furniture. Brenda Strelly. What if the paper items smell bad? How do you list them? I don't buy them if they smell bad. That's just me. Um, I don't buy anything with mold or anything unless it just happens to be in there. These were clean. That's another thing. A university or a college will get rid of everything that's bad. So if it smells or has anything wrong with it, chances are it's not going to be in their collection. This all doesn't smell at all. None of it, <clears throat> which I was really surprised because I wasn't sure how they were storing it or any of that stuff. So it was it was a nice, pleasant surprise to make sure they're good. But most of the time, I won't touch it all, unless it's something super, super rare. And there is a way to get rid of it. I won't go into big, long detail on that because it's a process, and I've talked about it many times. Maybe I'll do a video just showing you step-by-step step how to get rid of the scent on stuff because there is a way to get rid of all that. Again, you can't get rid of mold at all. If it's moldy and has the stains on it, it's not going anywhere. Um, I mean, you can bleach some paper, but I would never recommend doing it. So you're going to destroy the, the paper. <clears throat> Kathy, eBay absolutely has issues. I got a sale through PayPal. Nothing on my eBay sales at all. Yeah, I don't. I just look at my sold listings. I almost never go in there because you can just do it by the day and that'll be my total at the end of the day. I never trust their breakdown. <clears throat> Excuse me, sinus. Uh, let's see here. I wouldn't try anything with the Confederate battle flag. They started pulling listings that have that. 
It's actually listed in hate groups and, and not uh, allowed to be listed. I noticed missing items specific on my Inferium listings two weeks ago when I made a few revisions. It's been going on for a while. Now. Yeah, it's been going on for several weeks at least. Yeah, I don't... Uh, digic, digicitus. I'm sure I pronounced it wrong again. Yeah, I don't mess with any paper that smells. It's just not worth my time. Plus, then it's going to smell in here if I don't get rid of the scent. So you got you got to do something. Um, how do I distribute the cost of a purchase over a large lot like you just bought? I did not buy it. This was free. I didn't pay a dime for any of these two 2200 sheet musics. It was given to me by Eastern Michigan University for free. No dime. It did cost me a dime. Yeah, Amazon Seller 99. Um, good point. Sellbrite and Ecom Dash are like the two that we're looking at. And it'll keep it a complete listing. Your your whole listing will be mirrored onto their platform. So like in Sellbrite, if something happens, I have everything. I own it all. I can just rebroadcast it out if something happened. Yeah, that's a good point there too. Reseller King, how are you doing? Hey, Craig Landshark Picker, how are you doing? Yeah, you got to watch out with the Confederate flag. They they just did some new thing. That's uh, so why I said they just redid, and that was another one of the policies. I, I just was in a big discussion with somebody over that exact same thing in my Patreon group that um, eBay shut them down on a bunch of listings that technically, by what it says even in the new policy should be allowed technically the policy is so fuzzy on everything now that every policy ebay had before they've rewritten them all now and they're all vague every one of them is vague so they can they can say it means anything they want now they've taken out any specifics that tie those those policies down to a specific meaning it's all gone it makes no no freaking sense at all on that I sell across all platforms, and I have no problem really selling anything unless it's tied to a hate group or something that's illegal. So, I mean, we've sold guns back in the day on eBay when it was allowed. Uh, let me pop down here. Well, good, good to hear, Christopher, on the Christmas ornaments. That's a good thing. I haven't been to an estate sale. I haven't really had to. My pickers are almost done for the season. Um, so after this point, I'll, I'll have some time to be doing a lot more other stuff here for everybody, too. Yeah, my quarter four is up already. I'm way up, too. I don't really worry about that anymore because it always seems to go up. Robert Edwards, there is no specific number. People can have three listings and make half a million dollars a year, or people could have, like me, 70,000 listings and make half a million dollars a year. It, it doesn't matter how many listings. As long as you've got good items up, that's what matters, and you're making the profits off those items. Uh, let's see here. Uh, my feed just disappeared again. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, my feed's dis disappeared. Hang on. Yeah, Rich is up 50% over last year. It, it depends on what you sell. I, I'm, I can just tell you that in all honesty. <clears throat> We're up pretty considerable right now from last year. Yeah, Annie's talking about the variations too. Now, that's where the argument gets into because... It's so vague now. If you call eBay, again, I'll, you'll have to see the video because I go into very uh, good depth on, on their whole aspect of what a variations is or isn't. And eBay doesn't know what a variation is or isn't anymore at all if you call the help desk. No one there knows or understands what it used to be. All they're doing is looking at the new policy. And the new policy is... is awful it's god awful it explains nothing the old variations policy had many examples showing you and telling you specifically in which category you can and can't do it so nowadays there's a category for labels and if if i was allowed to just put any label which is what i was told by ebay on several phone calls i could save 
I could cut down from 2,000 label listings down to eight because each listing can have 250 variations on it. So it would save me a lot of money. This is why I've been so frustrated with the way they're doing variations now. And I pointed out listings that technically should be violating the rules. And I've got about a 50-50 chance um, calling with a dozen calls that it will be against the rules and then a 50-50 chance that it's not against the rules, depending on what day of the week, who calls, and who they talk to. eBay hasn't a clue on what the variations policy is at all anymore. That's my assumption on that from making 12 calls, and everyone seems to be different on what they tell me it is or isn't allowed. Just what I can say. Does your patron have videos on how to find these other categories? My problem is knowing where to source collectibles as I don't find anything you show in my area. Yvette, it's, it's out there. I can tell you for sure. Everything I find here, I can find anywhere I have ever lived. Um, I just went to Michigan. These are from a whole different state, these sheet musics. It's not even in my state. So you can find them anywhere. I find the stuff constantly. I've got a video going up. On Saturday from an antique store, we went in there. I've got somebody filming for me so we can see, and you get to see a lot of close-ups. We're going to talk a lot about what to look for and what, what's good about an antique mall. You're going to see me pull the stuff out right there with the, the people who ran the mall. I'll give you the information of where it was and the whole works. Um, I'll have some more of that type of video coming up real soon here. But again, Saturday, that video should be up. We spent the evening there. Um, the other day and I, I got some decent stuff for the time I was in there and you're going to get to see some of that stuff on where and what to source but the stuff is out there the videos on Patreon talk about the items themselves mostly the sources to find almost anything I, I, I have are local live auctions church sales flea markets and estate sales if you want to find antiques those are the places you need to go most Good estate sales have sheet music. Most everyone. Most good estate sales have records. Almost every one. Most every good estate sale has postcards. Same thing goes for the um, antique malls. The bigger the mall, the better it is, the more chance you have to find something. But almost every antique mall has records, sheet music, postcards, paper, soda collectibles, soda signs, uh, automotive, tin cans, everything I sell you can find at those type of places. Local live auctions, the same thing. I've bought all the stuff you see at local live auctions as well. Antique auctions, not just new NOS style uh, wholesale auctions, but antique and collectibles auctions. That's where you're going to find all that stuff at. I, I can tell you all day long that's where they're at. Dom, if he's still on, I know he had some stuff to do. He was gone and got in a traffic jam himself, but he'll tell you the same thing. You know, most of what we do and, and go, I don't I don't have to go to as many estate sales because I have pickers, but for, for before I had pickers, it was all estate sales. Dom goes to estate sales and finds the same kind of stuff wherever he, he goes. Flea markets and all that stuff. Church sales are always good. You know, and I go into writing all this stuff down. Tomorrow, me and Dom are, you know, Dom Primetime Treasure Hunter is on tomorrow. And we're just going to talk tomorrow night. It's a live show at 8 o'clock, and we're just going to be talking about where to source stuff at. So... You want that information, come back tomorrow at 8 uh, Eastern Standard Time, Ohio time. And you're going to have that information here as well, too. The Stun Law one, well, thank you. Josie, yeah, somebody, I, I might ask to post a copy of it in my Facebook group, but somebody posted a real nice uh, uh, message along with a photo. He got his son into sourcing. And they went to a source and, and did just what I do, and they bought a huge assortment of stuff. I think it's like 1,500 items for just a few hundred bucks, and he sold 14 items in the first week and paid for everything. So, I mean, it, it works very well if you pay attention and you, you do your time and your homework and research what you're going to buy. I got enough. In, I don't have to source really at all. You know, I've got enough inventory for at least a good year of listing without any sourcing whatsoever, without any problem, maybe two years, I don't know, maybe even longer than that. You know, we've got a ton of inventory, but you, I keep buying it because I'm not going to be giving up reselling. So if I have too much stuff to resell, that's not a big, big problem for me. I got all the space in the world to store it. I'm not renting a storage facility. I've I got my father's old workshop, so I've got a huge area that's, you know, 1,200 square feet on top of what I got here. So, you know, I, I stockpile uh, stuff. It's not a dead stock or dead pile or death pile, whatever everybody wants to call it. It's back stock to me. 
It's stuff that when it's dry and I can't find something in the store, so I got it here. I got all the sourcing things I want. I just walk to a shelf and I pull something off. That's that would that should be your goal in my opinion. It's like having your own warehouse full of stuff. You don't have to worry about not being able to source for a week. If if you hurt yourself and you can't go sourcing, what are you gonna do? Always have backup of everything. Backup merchandise, you know, backup abilities, you know, if it's just a one man person and you, you you better get it when you can. Get all the stuff you can and have backup. If you get hurt, you know, what are you gonna do if it's one person? Now I've got a BOP, so I, I'm a little different again than a lot of people. We have a business owner's policy, a BOP. So if I get hurt, it covers me. You know, I'm not going to have loss. If damage or theft or anything, it's all covered. You know, we cover every dime that we've got in here by inventory. So covers my supplies, my shelving, my vehicles, all that kind of stuff. You know, don't take chances. If you run this and this pays your bills, you darn well better cover yourself with something. A BOP is the best way. I don't know anybody on here who resells who has a BOP. Maybe maybe somebody like, um, I can't think of his name, Craig's, Craigslist Hunter. He might because he owns a business. And maybe John at Nevermore, he might because he owns a business. And he probably has to have insurance on his belongings or at least the business, the building itself, I would imagine. But most people who just resell out of their house don't have any insurance to cover them. You know, when you run when you're running your own business and it's all relying on you paying your bills by selling stuff, you better have it covered. I mean, it's just like having a car. If somebody hits you and you don't have insurance and they don't have insurance, you're out of car. How are you going to get anywhere? That's why insurance is essential. And I know a lot of people don't talk about it or want to hear about it, but it's worth a hundred and some odd bucks a month out of my pocket to make sure that I'm not going to lose a dime if something happens. If the internet's down, it covers me. If I can't do business for two, three, four days, a storm comes through and knocks down all the power lines or something, it's covered. Well, I've got backup ways to get internet, but you know, if, if something happens, I, I, you know, I'm covered, but for most people it's not. I, we've got backup, you know, juice so I can plug in and run computers without power and stuff. You know, the we've got a couple of those jumpers, too, that I can run for hours, a computer, too. I always keep extra laptops plugged in and ready to run and stuff like that, too, just so I have backup systems. You know, same with, you know, printers and stuff like that. I've got juice I can run off a car and all that stuff. Just like eBay losing stuff, have a backup. After the photo fiasco, we, we got into Cellbrite. I mean, we do Cellbrite, and we own our listings. I, I don't trust anybody with my listings anymore, you know eBay isn't the only platform and you know I'm branching out we're on nine well ten we're on ten platforms right now but the, the point of it is don't put all of your eggs in one basket you know anyway let me just get to one question or one more well we're getting close to the end let me just check another question or two here again it's been a really long day I just got back I've been gone all day long doing stuff like this picks and stuff uh, let me pop down here. Yeah, here's Rick Duke. Yes, old ink cartridges can totally mess up a printer. Uh, my mother just had to trash her printer because she used an expired cartridge, but it was sealed full. Yeah, sealed ones, it doesn't mean anything if it's sealed. you got to look at the date on it. I, I, as an IT guy, will never buy anything that's old or dated, especially those ones that have been sitting around. If it was sitting in a real hot environment, it could all clump together. You would never know it, and you could ruin someone's printer. So it always aggravated me when I see people not testing or knowing or worrying about dates on stuff like that, and you're selling them. And then they wonder at the end of the day when they get a bad feedback because, again, I'm not trying to criticize them. I mean, most people aren't aware of this fact. You see a, a sealed printer cartridge, and you just assume it's fine because it's new. That stuff is not good forever, and it does go bad. I have seen it in person in my own printer one that I bought from somebody and it wasn't any good and it did jam up my printer. I know how to take it apart and I've had to pull the roller and we had to get the brushes out and, and I spent some time cleaning it back up and it works again. Now, if you didn't know how to take it all apart, you may have had an issue and had to trash your printer or take it somewhere and it's probably not worth paying somebody to take it apart. It's probably just better to buy another printer. Now, I spent you know, 30 or 40 minutes taking it apart and cleaned it all out. It wasn't fun. I had to vacuum and the whole works, but... Uh, let's see here. I have all my kids have been doing the hustle since birth, it seems. Yeah, our kids do it too. I have an old military patch in the Nazi party with swastika on it. Am I not able to? No, you cannot sell that on eBay. That is a no-no. Somebody will report it probably and you'll get pulled. No patches. Uh, let's see here.
Nazi items are not all banned. You can, as I said, you can sell stamps, money, paper money, and postal items as well. Stamps, history, postal, coins as well. And swastikas aren't necessarily a Nazi symbol. Swastikas are a peace symbol for the Native Americans, and as well as other, we've seen them in, you know, the Far East has had swastikas for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. It's a, it's a Native American symbol even, so. Uh, Gnome and the Frog, welcome. New to your channel. Can you touch on old photographs, please? I have videos on old photographs, and I'll probably have a couple more coming out. We were in auction today and saw a box of photos, but didn't pull the trigger. I mean, photos are a huge category to go into. Um, I'm going to have another video out. I would just recommend going through. We've got like 600 plus videos on here, and I've got many that just touch on photos. And I know for sure there's a couple that just touch on photos. Car, military, stuff like that are usually what I go for. Sports ones can be okay, too. Photos is a huge area, and, and we do make a lot of money on photos. Um, I just sold one for 125 the other day. It's in my last uh, sold video uh, that I have up on here, too. Um, I better cut it off here, because, again, I do have something still going on still tonight. Uh, we have someone coming over in about 30 minutes to help us with something. Um, but we're going to have to cut it off, I think, here. hate to do that to you. Again, um, tomorrow, 8 o'clock, Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunter. We're going to just be talking about sourcing. It's just going to be sourcing. No back and forth. It's going to be us talking about the best places to source, sourcing strategies. I mean, the whole work's on sourcing. We're going to talk about where we get our stuff tomorrow. So um, besides the stuff that you see here today, uh, sourcing is an easy, easy thing to do when you know the best places. And I've talked about, you know, policies and ways to get that going but we're, we'll touch on that tomorrow as well i appreciate everybody coming on tonight hopefully everybody had a good evening hopefully your sales are going uh better i will look into and we'll probably have a video just about the issues on ebay as well coming up shortly um, but i'll just let you go with that and i hope everybody has a good evening